Uh, regular viewers of this program have come to know and love a number of what we around the office call running jokes or running gags. Most of you have seen them on the air or on the commemorative stamps available at the post office. Uh, uh, to name a few, the giant doorknob, the car and truck rental song, the house made of stadium trash. Well, tonight marks the end of one of late night's most successful and most beloved running gags, the conspiracy guy. Yes, we're, we're all sorry to see it go, but like MASH or Mary Tyler Moore, it's just run its course. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the three fine young actors who have performed so brilliantly in all of these running conspiracy mini-dramas. So as I introduce them, if they can come out and just take a bow, Joe Toplin and Sandy Frank as the uniformed goons. Joe, Sandy, come on up. Nice job. Thank you very much. And now, as uh, Mr. Conspiracy himself, Chris Elliott. Chris, come on out and take it. Nice job. That's great. Look at that, the folks are on their feet. You guys, uh, you've done a nice job, a, a great job, and you've, you've entertained millions of Americans, and, and thank you very much. And we have kind of a surprise for you tonight. Uh, we have uh, put together a little, little videotape retrospective to share some of the great moments that uh, we all shared during the run of the uh, conspiracy uh, guy. So if you'll watch the uh, monitors here and take a look at some videotape we've put together for you. Uh, yes, uh, sir. What, what can we do for you? What is your name? I think you know who I am. We, we have one more special surprise for you guys. Hal, is the telephone call ready? Yes, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on the other end of this telephone is Mercury astronaut and American hero, Colonel Gordon Cooper. Uh, Colonel Cooper, thank you so much for calling. Good evening, Mr. Letterman. This is Colonel Gordon Cooper. Yes, sir. Uh, it was certainly good of you to take the time to call tonight, uh, Gordon. Oh, I'm glad to do it, Dave. I just wanted to say congratulations to you and the three young men who've made America so proud of their fine performance. Well, well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed exploring the frontiers of space, and your boys are pioneers too, so please give them my best. Well, uh, Gordon, I, I sure <laughs> I sure will, and thank you very much for your call. It was, it was an honor to have you be with us tonight. Thank you, Dave. All right, good night.
Yeah, that was... Gentlemen, again, thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of all America. Guys, what a moment, huh? Yeah, quite a, quite a night. We'll be right back with Mr. Joe Theismann, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Please come back and see us whenever you're. Uh, uh, oh, certainly. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, anytime. Really, very really funny stuff. Thank Hal, uh, is the phone call ready? We have a very special phone call from a very special man. I believe it is, Dave. All right, is it right here on the line? I'll take it. Yeah, hello. Good evening, Mr. Latterman. It's Colonel Gordon Cooper speaking. <laughs> well, um, Colonel, uh, good evening. It's quite an honor to be speaking with you, sir. Oh, the honor's mine, David, to be a part of your historic reverse image telecast. Let me just add my congratulations on the success of your bold experiment. Well, thank you very much, Colonel. David is a Project Mercury astronaut. I orbited the Earth blazing new frontiers. While you, as an NBC TV personality, are broadcast into numbers of homes in many parts of the country. Keep up that good work. Well, I'll certainly do my best, Colonel. Well, America's proud of you. And also that little guy who plays piano for you. Congratulations again. Okay. Well, thank you so much for calling again, uh, Colonel Cooper. Always an honor. Good night, Dave. Good night, uh, Gordon. <laughs> Pretty exciting, isn't it? Are we going into the control room now? Okay, let's, let's take one final look at the festivities in our control room as the completion of this historic evening comes to a close. Here he comes. He's coming to the control room now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, Bill, will you have the ushers pass out the drama mean, please? <laughs> oh, I'm going in. I'm sorry. Good heavens. <laughs> what time is rehearsal? All right. Well, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've done it again. All right. Uh, that's it. Are we, we finished here? All right, Larry, go ahead. Stand by three. I don't know. What what are you going to say? I don't know. We're at the end. Okay, okay this is uh, working even better than I had hoped. Uh, I want to thank everybody who was a part of this magic evening. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. Uh, letter number five. Dear Dave, why do hot dogs come ten to a pack and hot dog buns come eight to a pack? <laughs> Sincerely, George S. Williams, Victorville, California. Uh, well, George, because your question is of a technical nature, let me turn you over now to our own Jimmy Fitzgerald in Technician's Corner. Jimmy? You ask an interesting question, George. Manufacturers include those two extra hot dogs in every package because they know that people just don't eat hot dogs, they also use them around the house. For example, a toothbrush is much easier for your child's hand to hold when it has one of these cushioned hot dog grips. And it's easier to keep track of your rings, tie clips, and cufflinks with these attractive jewelry organizers. For one of the most valuable uses, for the hot dog is to suppress the noise of automatic pistol fire. <laughs> like this nine millimeter Browning high power. Just screw the hot dog into the muzzle with a twisting motion. When the gun is fired, the fatty meat traps, cools, and gradually releases the hot gases so that the normally deafening blast is just a whisper. Just use the hot dog once, then replace it. But save the old ones, they're muzzle cooked and mighty good. <laughs> so remember, if you want to be neat, 
plug your muzzle with meat. What did he say? Plug your muzzle with meat. Good Lord. All right, we have a... Uh... We have a wonderful program tonight. Mr. John Candy is here. Also, uh, Usherette Thelma Moore. And, uh, all right, fine. Also, Mr. Wizard will be on this program, and a visit, a short visit from our own Larry Millman. So we got a fine show. Come on back. Here. Well, welcome back. we got a good show tonight. John Candy is going to be out here in just a minute. Yes, Hal, what is it? I believe there's a phone call. Please. Phone call, all right. Right here, is this the illuminated button? Hit that one. Pick it up? Pick it up now. Okay. Hello? Good evening, David. This is Colonel Gordon Cooper speaking. La ladies and gentlemen, it's... It's uh, Gordon Cooper, former astronaut and uh, quite an American hero. Uh, how are you doing, Colonel? I'm fine, David. I just wanted to congratulate you on your viewer mail segment. Uh -huh. As an astronaut, I orbited the globe, blazing new frontiers. Now, when you answer your viewer mail, you're a national communication system to respond to letters from various places around the country. That's really something, I think. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much, Colonel. You're doing a fine job with the mail. America is proud of you. Thank you again. Uh, excuse me, Colonel uh, Cooper, but didn't you call us last night on the air to congratulate us about the reverse image show? I sure did, David. Is there some problem with me calling two nights in a row? Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, it's always a pleasure to hear from you, sir. Thank you for calling. Thank you, David. Congratulations again, uh, and good night. Okay. Gordon Cooper called again, Paul. He's a very considerate man. Really nice. My first guest... Thanks to Ed McMahon and his program Star Search, the term spokesmodel has become a part of everyone's everyday vocabulary tonight. It is our pleasure to welcome that show's $100,000 grand champion spokesmodel, Tracy Ross. <laughs> Nice to see you. Do you like to dance? Oh, my God. Thank you very much. The seat right here. Tracy, good heavens, good heavens, good heavens. How are you? Fine, thank you. Congratulations on your big victory. Oh, thank you very much. Now, did, uh, what, for people who may not be familiar with the program, what exactly is a spokesmodel? What, are, what does this person do? A spokesmodel is a unique term coined for someone who's able to walk and talk at the same time. Unbelievable. <laughs> And um, did, did, did you always want to be a spokesmodel? Well, I, I always wanted to walk and talk at the same time. Uh huh. So this is a good opportunity. Now, how did you get involved with the show? Well, I was watching, and uh, the spokesmodel who was on Star Search when I was watching said, if you'd like to be on Star Search, send an 8x10 photo of yourself to Star Search. Mm -hmm. Box S-T-A-R. Mm -hmm. So I did. Yeah. That's all. But you originally applied in a different category, oh, well, right? I applied in actress category. And what happened when the, you turned in your application as an actress co contestant? I got screen tested for it, but they, they switch off actor and actress every other week, so they need half as many women in the, in the actress category. Yeah. So it was filled up. So they asked me if I'd like to be in the model category, and I figured a bird in hand's worth three, four in a bush. So I went for it. Yeah. Um, now, now why, why isn't there a male uh, spokesmodel uh, competition? I don't know. Yeah. What are you going to do with the dough? Um, have you gotten it yet? Have you received the I, money? You know what? I haven't picked my check up yet, but I, have, I can pick it up. I'm the only one who hasn't picked hers up yet, and it's because I just can't deal with it yet. You have to go by Ed's house to get the check? Is that... <laughs> no, all I have to do is go up to Telerep, and I've seen the check. I, it says 100-00... Zero. Yeah. Point zero zero, right? Okay. Yeah. And so, what are you going to do with this money? Um, try to keep it. Mm -hmm. Now, does uh, do, does uh, is this this is not tax free, is it? No, but when they give it to me, it's it's the one hundred thousand dollars intact. Yeah. Well, and then sure when I get is. outside, the IRS Start wrestles me to the ground. Peeling that off. Yeah. Do you have any idea how much you're going to be able to keep there? Well, I've been incorporated, so hopefully I'll be able to to keep 
Some of it. Yeah. Now, you're, you're going to model for us a little bit later, aren't you? Now, do we sure. have a phone call here? Is that what I understand? Hey, Dave, yeah. Oh, great. We have a phone call. This will be exciting. We're, just push this button here. That's right. All right. Hello. Good evening, David. This is Colonel Gordon Cooper speaking. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, former astronaut Gordon Cooper, as always, sir, a pleasure to hear from you. To what do we owe this great honor this time? Well, actually, David, I wanted to speak to the young lady. Tracy Ross. Sure, Tracy, it's uh, Colonel Cooper for you on the oh, phone, former you. Mercury astronaut. <laughs> Miss Ross, I just wanted to add my congratulations on your being named the grand champion in the Star Search spokesmodel competition. Well, thank you, Colonel. <laughs> As an astronaut, I was one of the first Americans into space. As a spokesmodel, you're blazing trails towards stars of a different kind. I, I certainly will do my best. The space program is very important to America. So it's a man program. Keep up the good work, and please say good night today, Father. I will, Colonel. Uh, good night. <laughs> Apparently, as uh, it calls from time to time, uh, Colonel. Oh, yeah, yeah, we uh, we have to go away, but uh, we're coming back, and then you're gonna we're gonna see you uh, do the spokesmodeling. All right, Tracy yeah. Ross will be here. We got all kinds of things. We'll be right back. Uh, you know, winter's almost over, and spring is just around the corner, and that means young people's thoughts are turning to, well, you feel a little lightheaded, you get a little teary-eyed, yes, it's the cold and flu season. <laughs> and for those of you planning a visit to the doctor soon, we're going to now take some time to review a few rules of doctor's waiting room etiquette. Walk this way, if you will, won't you? And of course, if I could walk this way, I wouldn't need the talcum powder. Well, here we are in the uh, here we are in the waiting room. Now, the first thing uh, when you arrive in the doctor's office waiting room, you want to let the nurse know you're here. So you just walk right up to the registration desk. Hi, uh, I'm here for my flu shot. The name is Letterman. Ten o'clock. Fine. The doctor will be with you shortly. Uh -huh. Would you care for uh, some donuts, <laughs> some marshmallow crispies, or some flan? Um, Only two fifty a dozen. We baked them up right here in our office. No, that's. Uh, I'm really not interested. Thank you. Well, how about a shoe shine and a manicure? Uh, no, I'm fine. Do you need if any you're... yard work done? No, I don't need any yard work done. <laughs> this brings us to uh, rule number one: Beware of doctors who depend on extra sources for their income. You want to watch that for? Check it out. You need a flu shot? I got flu shots. That's all you need. Fifty bucks a pop. Uh. Who, who are you exactly? Uh, I'm the doctor. <laughs> well, well, I'm a friend of the doctor's. I'm loosely associated with him, but, but he told me you needed a flu shot. Fifty bucks a pop. Rule number two, don't buy a flu shot from anyone in the waiting room. Wait, <laughs> wait until you're inside the office before getting any shots. Thank you very much. Flu shots. Did I hear somebody mention flu shots? I'm pretty sure I have the flu. Thank you for your kind applause. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your kind applause. You're too good to me, really. Excuse me, sir. I understand you're offering flu shots at a bargain price. Dave, could you hold this for me? Why, why, sure. What what is this, Larry? This is a doctor's office. What do you think it is? <laughs> Uh, here you go. This is uh, rule number three now. Never agree to hold anything for anyone in a doctor's waiting room. Why, it's little Davy. My, how you've grown. Hold it right there, Aunt Helen. Don't make me use this. I'll put daylight three if I have to. Now get over there and sit down. Go on. No false moves. <laughs> well... What you have to remember here is uh, people are in this office because there is something wrong with them and you just can't be too careful. <laughs> Say, why are you seeing the doctor? I have a duodenal ulcer. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> here, why don't you try a barbecue potato chip and some potato... Uh, <laughs> some bean dip. 
That'll make you feel better. Yeah. Well, uh, here's another common mistake to avoid. The rule is starve a duodenal ulcer, feed a fever. I'm always getting that one mixed stuff. Yeah, that's, that's tricky to remember. Uh, excuse me, sir. You forgot to check in. What's your name? Oh, I'm Larry Bud Melman. And what did you want to see the doctor about? <laughs> excuse me? I'm sorry, Mr. Melman. You'll have to speak up. Ah, I said when I sweat, I get a rash on my thigh that looks like the map of Mexico. <laughs> well, this, uh... I'd pay good money to see that. Um, now, this teaches us another, another important... Don't sneak up on me. This teaches us another important lesson. Don't laugh at other people's symptoms. This waiting is boring, Dave. What am I supposed to do? Well, that's a good point. Now, uh, exactly how long should you wait in a doctor's office before you get really steamed? You know, it's not unusual for a doctor to keep you waiting a long time, but you shouldn't feel obligated <laughs> to wait more than one seasonal change. Is Mr. is Mr. Johnson here? That's me. I'm right here. Larry, you're not Mr. Johnson. What are, you, what are you trying to do here? But I'm tired of waiting. This is my chance to see the doctor. Don't worry, Mr. Johnson. Although the procedure is extremely painful, it's effective nearly 30% of the time. That reminds me of another rule. Never pretend to be another patient. Larry, uh, this sounds pretty serious. I don't care, David. I have nothing to live for. What do you mean, you have nothing to live for? You, you have your work on the show here, you have our respect, and, and of course the respect of your millions of fans, and, and of course you have your, your day job. I know you, 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 you love your day job, and, and you still have that, all your friends there at the day job, Larry. Not anymore, Dave, I just lost my day job. Didn't you see this article in yesterday's New York Times? <laughs> Well, let's see what we have here, Larry. New York Times, Monday, March 12th. By day, Mr. Melman worked part-time as, as a receptionist in a drug rehabilitation center. But last month, his boss found out about Mr. Melman's nighttime career and asked him to resign. Is that true, Larry? Oh, gee, what was that guy's name? You don't... You don't... <laughs> you, you were... <laughs> well, I guess the turnover there was so frequent that you hardly had time to memorize your boss's name, but... Uh, gee, Larry, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your job. I, I don't know what to say about that. I, that's awful. I could just stop. Yeah, well, I wish there was, there was some way I could convince you that life is worth living. Dave, there's a, there's a phone call. Uh, oh, uh, thank you, Hal. the nurse's desk if you want to. Thank you very much. It's Hal, our director. He's safe in the booth. Yeah, hello. Hey, David. This is Gordon Cooper speaking. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, it's former astronaut Gordon Cooper. Uh, Colonel... Uh, Colonel, to, uh, to what do we uh, owe this uh, honor, sir? I've been watching the TV, and I've seen the New York Times article. And I'd just like to say a few words to Mr. Merriman, if I may. Oh, sure, Larry, he, he wants to talk to you. It's Colonel Cooper. <laughs> okay. Hello. Mr. Merriman. You shouldn't be discouraged by a few setbacks. Even in the early space program, there were scrub missions and occasional tactical failures. But it all led to Project Apollo, and you know how that worked out. No, I don't. What happened? We landed on the moon. And you too, Larry Bud, with courage and perseverance, will reach a new altitude in your career. All Americans are proud of the achievements of the space program. They're also proud of your achievements on the Letterman program. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Larry Bud. Good, good night, night, Colonel. Gosh, <laughs> Dave, maybe I've got the right stuff after all. <laughs> you know, you know, Larry, it's it's good to see you laugh again. And <laughs> Anything else? I <laughs> I think that worked all right, don't you? Yeah, yes, okay. Dave. okay. All right, we have a great show for you tonight. Jay Leno will be out here in a few minutes, so come on back, folks. Thanks, Larry. Nice job. Thank
Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, uh, oh, that's awfully darn nice. Uh, welcome to the show, and uh, we're just getting back from a, a weekend. And uh, John Glenn, I guess, left the, the Democratic uh, campaign. Uh, I think it was uh, financial reasons, and, and I'll tell you why. I became suspicious, oh, Thursday when they announced their big hitchhiking tour through the southeast. <laughs> I said, something's not right here. <laughs> Did you see this in the Sunday Times? A paleontologist uh, just over the river at uh, Princeton the University has a new theory about why the dinosaurs are now extinct. He said the reason is they just couldn't adapt to the metric system. And you know, I... <laughs> These are only test jokes, your own mileage. We, uh, did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. Paul let's, let's go around the room and check in with our staff now, and we'll find out how their weekends went, respectively. Or is it respectfully? Respectively. Respectively. Paul, how was your weekend? Did you have a nice weekend? Very nice time, David. Uh, accomplished. Well, you know me. I was going to rest, but you know how I am. I had to go into the studio, you know. <laughs> had to create it a little bit, but I had a nice, you know, I accomplished a lot. Would I, you say you had a great weekend? Had a pretty good, yeah. It was a great, it was a great weekend, really. Okay. I think it Barry, was. how about yourself? Did you have a good week? Had a great weekend? Bill, you're... Fine, fine. Great weekend, David. Now, what did you do, Bill? Well, I got a cold. <laughs> Well, no wonder you're so excited about your time off. That was time what you didn't waste time. You put it to good use. It's possible, Dave. All right, let's go into the control room now, ladies and gentlemen. Hal? Yeah, Dave. How was your weekend? Terrific. Terrific. Okay, let's, uh, let me hear from Pete. How was Pete's weekend? Oh, great. I marched in a parade. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, was this something you and your wife organized around the house, Pete, or...? You played the accordion? Lou and I marched all the way up to 87th Street. Oh, that's nice. Well, then you did have a good weekend. Now, how about uh, Brian? How was your weekend, Brian? Excellent weekend, Dave. Excellent. <laughs> and the tuna salad. Now, um, oh, oh, and let's check with the other Peter. Peter, can he get to the microphone? Hello? <laughs> how was your weekend? Very nice. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, let's go back here. Barbara, how, how, was, your, how was your weekend? Oh, good. Well, that's good. Everybody seems to have had a uh, pleasant... Excuse me, Dave. Dave. Yeah, yes, Al? Uh, uh, there's a phone call for you. Uh, you can pick it up at the desk. Okay, excuse me. I'll go over here and get this phone call. Uh, highly irregular, but sure. Well, <laughs> right here on the line that's lighted up, Al? Right, take that one, Dave. Okay. Uh, hello? Good evening, David. This is Gordon Cooper speaking. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's former astronaut Gordon Cooper. How are you, uh, Colonel? I'm just fine, David. I wanted to add my congratulations to you on your successful completion of a good weekend. Oh, well, <laughs> well, well, thank you very much, sir. I'm also pleased that your director, Hal, your assistant, Barbara, and that band leader of yours also had a good weekend. Well, I'll certainly pass along your messages, Colonel. Even in the space program, regular periods of rest were vital to maintain <laughs> and the mental alertness of our men in space. I know these same qualities are vital to our men on television, so keep up the good work. Well, it, it was certainly good of you to take time out of your busy schedule to call us, sir. My pleasure, David. Good night. Okay, good night, sir. <laughs> Colonel... Uh... Pretty nice, wasn't it? We, uh, we, uh, we, we're going to go ahead and do this now, though. Okay. We occasionally, what we'll do on the show, if there's somebody in the audience who has a uh, phone call that they're not eager to make, I'll be happy to make it for them. Our first uh, guest from the audience tonight, uh, hi, what is your name? Um, Michelle Mori from Los Angeles, California. Oh, Los Angeles. <laughs> Uh, what, what part of Los Angeles do you live in? Uh, Watts. It's where my school is, USC. Uh, oh, you're a school student. I right. see you here. And, and where do you live? Watts. In the sorority house. I Watts. see. So you, you live in Los Angeles, go to school there, and what are you going to do when you graduate? Uh, I'm going to go for my master's in cinema there. Uh, oh, so you're a film student. Nice to have you here, Michelle. And what can we do for you by way of making a phone call? Well, uh, when Reagan decided to cut off my father's social security check, he decided to punish me by cutting my allowance off just so he could be punishing Reagan by doing that. And so uh, 
I uh, don't have any money, and so I wanted to come out to see the show. And so what I did was I slowly but surely embezzled a thousand dollars from my father's there bank account. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. By God, that's the American spirit. <laughs> Pilfer off a quick grand from the old man. I like that. Uh, and now Dad has no idea about this. Dad has no idea about this, but um, I would do things like have a $100 phone bill and tell him it was $300, so he'd put $300 in the bank. And over a period of a month, I got $1,000 all saved up for this trip. Dad <laughs> fell for this? About the... Uh... Whoa, my, oh, my. Uh, how old a man is Dad? He's, si <laughs> he's 65 years old. Jeez, uh, well. <laughs> I, I just never... He looks like he's 40. He's young. I really. see. All right. Okay. So you want us to tell your father that uh, the balance is off by a thousand? Yeah, just a bit. Okay, Michelle. Thank you very much. Thank Have a you. seat, and we'll let Paul vote on these. That is, if he's still here. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. What is your name, please? Dan Levitz. Dan, where are you from? Great Neck, New York. And what do you do for a living, Dan? Uh, I go to school. Yeah. Well, where Queens do you go to college? Where? Queens College. Queens College. And you're studying to be a what, sir? I'm not really sure yet, but Attaboy. something good. So, so it's money well spent for you. Now, uh, Dan, what, what, uh, what, what do you want me to do for you tonight? Well, I'm running a softball team for some league in the uh, summer, and a friend of mine, this big guy named Wes, who's about 6'4", 280, I promised him he's going to be batting fourth and playing first base. Yeah. And he's really going to be riding the bench. <laughs> <laughs> what is he? Uh, no, he can't hit, can't field, or, or he's just uh, not too graceful. Not too graceful. Not okay. Too graceful. Uh, this man's name is Wes. Wesley. Okay, Dan. This will be phone call number two, Paul. Thank you very much, Dan. Yes. Uh, how do you come on over, man? What is your name? Teresa Lang. Teresa, and uh, where are you from? Richmond Hill. And what do you do for a living? I work in the racetrack. You work at the racetrack. Uh, where, which racetrack is this? Aqueduct. All right. And what do you do there? I'm a parking attendant. Okay. How long have you had the job? Two years. You enjoy the work? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what, what is the call you want us to make? I want you to call my mother and tell her I'm going to Saratoga <laughs> in August because she doesn't know I'm going yet. Uh-huh. Because she told me a couple of months ago I wasn't allowed to go. And they asked me and I said yes. So I'm going. Uh -huh. But she doesn't know I'm going. So this is just uh, <laughs> what you're saying. It's hard cheese for mom here. It's a... <laughs> Uh, now, is she, she, what, does she mind you working at the racetrack at all? Not really. She doesn't care about that? In the, in the, at the beginning, she did. Yeah, and, but now she's more concerned with you going to Saratoga. Yeah. Okay, so that would be call number three. And now, thank you very much, uh, Teresa. Let me turn this over to our friend, uh, Paul Schaefer. This will be one of Paul's uh, last official duties on the show. <laughs> Uh, if you tuned in late, the band has broken up. Now, Paul... No, it's an up thing, though. It's a very But it is. <laughs> It's an up thing. Pretty much yeah. the way Watergate was an up thing. It's, uh... All right, uh, Paul, let me turn the balloting over to you. We have one, Michelle Morey, the lovely young film student from USC who is stealing her father blind. Stealing. We have uh, Dan Levitz, who just doesn't have the courage to tell a man who is 6'4 and 285 that he ain't playing. And we have Teresa Lang, who is running away with the racetrack people. She's going to Saratoga. What do you think? Hey, going to Saratoga. I think we, I'd like, like to that? find out about okay, that check. Okay, Teresa. And, and Come on down. Oh, how old are you, Teresa? 20, nice to see you. Have a seat over there. Let me ask you a question. Is that the correct number to be calling for mom? Yep. Okay, when are you going to Saratoga? August, August. you said? Let's see if I dial this correctly. Many folks tell me this is the most exciting part of the program. I think I had a wrong line. Let's try it again. How are we doing on time? One minute. Oh, my gosh, we've got to hurry this, Teresa. Do you get along with mom okay? Yeah. What's her name? Tootsie. <laughs> Seriously, what's your name? Cecilia. Cecilia. But everyone calls her Tootsie. Can I call her Tootsie? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I thought I heard something too. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Is uh, is uh, Tootsie. Tootsie there, please? Speaking. I'm sorry. I'm speaking. Oh, Tootsie, my name is David Letterman. I'm calling from New York City. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, just fine. I couldn't be better. You enjoying the spring weather? I love it. Oh, good. Well, you know, uh, Tootsie, your, uh, your daughter, Teresa, is here, a lovely young lady, and uh, she wanted me to phone and tell you that uh, after August, you can go ahead and uh, rent her room out because... Oh? Yeah, she's... Uh, uh, she, you know the, the job she has at uh, Aqueduct? Yes. Well, she likes it so well, she's, she's moving to Saratoga. 
I got a new spot, too. <laughs> Um, well, uh, apparently, there's a, you're already going, aren't you? Yeah, there's nothing that can be done at this point. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, uh, believe me, Tootsie, I'm just sick about this whole thing. Well, you better do some talking to her, then, for me. Well, I'll, I'll do what I can, but you see, uh, apparently, she's made a lot of elaborate plans, and she's going to go oh, ahead really? and... Yeah, she's going to go ahead and go, and right. she... For her idol, now, you should be able to talk to her for me. Uh, well, I'll, uh, can you hang around after the show? We can talk. <laughs> Uh, I'll, uh, I'll certainly do what I can, uh, so, uh, what the hell is that? See, hello? Yes. Yes. Excuse me, I have is an urgency really call on this line for David Letterman from Colonel Gordon Cooper. Oh. Yes, excuse me, this is a, excuse me, uh, uh, Cootsie, can you hang on for a second? Sure, I can. Okay, uh, yes, hello? Good evening, David, this is Colonel Gordon Cooper. Oh! You know, this is... Ladies and gentlemen, it's former astronaut Gordon Cooper. Uh, Gordon, what can I do for you, sir? I was just watching your bad phone call. I feel it's an important service you offer the American people. Oh, well, thank you very much, uh, Colonel. If Mrs. Lang is still listening, I'd like to say a few words to her. Oh, why, well, sure, go right ahead. You know, Mrs. Lang, in the space program, it took a special kind of courage to face the unknown. Mr. Letterman has shown another kind of courage in calling you tonight. Now it's your turn to show that you too have what it takes to deal with unexpected challenges. I don't say it would be easy, but try to accept the fact that Teresa wants to park cars at a racetrack. In <laughs> the early days of the Mercury program, I knew some astronauts who would spend time at racetracks on slow days. Anyway, we know you won't let us down. Good night and good luck. Well, thank you very much, Colonel. Nice talking with you. There you are, Teresa. There's a sponge, and there's a collapsible drinking cup. Thank nice you. meeting you. Thank you very much. Have a good time in Saratoga. We'll be right back with Andrea Martin. We do. We have a good show. Nice to see you and the uh, band together and, and ready to go. You know, last week, oh, I, th this is what I forgot to tell you tonight. We are going to welcome a brand new employee to the NBC family. This woman has worked here, I guess, about one full week. Uh, last week, a new computer systems analyst started working here at the NBC television network. And we'd like you all to meet her now from Flushing, New York, NBC's newest employee. Please welcome Wendy Moran. Wendy! <laughs> Wendy, nice to see you. Come on over here. Wendy, did I did I get this right? You're just completing your first full week. Yes, I am. And uh, what is uh, a systems analyst? What do you do? Well, we design the computer systems that keep NBC running. Oh, you do? Yes. <laughs> and uh, how are things running so far? Just great. Now, uh, what was the job you had before this? Designing systems for a bank. For a bank. Now, how does this compare with the bank work? Far more glamorous, far more exciting, and far more interesting. All right, now I have a little, a little surprise for you. Uh, the first of many tonight. Do you know, do you know your official ID number here at NBC? No, they told me they'd tell me about two weeks from now. Well, we were able to pull some strings, Wendy. <laughs> that's right. Get a hold of yourself. There is your official NBC ID number: five two three eight eight four. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> now, you don't, you don't actually work in this building, do you? No, I don't. I where work do you work? Over in the Eurus building. And you know, where is the Eurus building for it's, folks who just woke oh, up? Oh, it's a couple blocks from here. A couple of blocks from here. They like to keep us separate. Yeah, but you, nonetheless, you feel as though you're part of the NBC family. Oh, definitely. We eat lunch in the commissary almost oh, that's every great. day. That's, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how long you keep that up. Now, <laughs> Uh, Wendy, when, when uh, people found out that uh, we were going to welcome a new employee to the company, uh, they wanted also to say hello. So uh, through the miracle of videotape, I would like you now to uh, have uh, some greetings from some fellow NBC employees. Take a look at the monitor here at home. Use your television set.
Hello, Wendy. I hope this is the beginning of a long and fruitful association for you with the network. Faith, trust, and commitment. These are the watchwords of a good employee. Just remember, faith and trust in our policies, even if they strike you as a bit unorthodox, will ensure you that you get your piece of the company pie. So, welcome aboard, Wendy, but don't rock the boat. Hi, Wendy. I'd like to talk to you for just a minute about teamwork. And it kind of works the same way as it does in sports. It takes a group effort from all NBC employees to make a true winner. Now, that means following the game plan without any question at all and uh, perhaps looking the other way when a member of your team, say, uh, uh, Willett Scott, bends the rules just a, a little bit. Play ball with us, Wendy. No one gets hurt. And again, congratulations on the new job. To play it safe, you stay out of my way, and I'll stay out of yours. <laughs> now, uh, maybe it's too early to ask you this question, but what so far is the most rewarding part of your job up there? Just working with the people. Mm -hmm. They're really, really great, very warm, very friendly. Now, you know how early on you can make, uh, you can form opinions and feelings. Is there somebody that you've already singled out as in the, uh, down the road somewhere getting on your nerves pretty bad? <laughs> I don't think I should start saying so so early. <laughs> no, but you get kind of a feeling there might be a problem. I'm not, no, you don't have to name the person or anything, but... Really, people are so warm here. <laughs> uh, okay, no, that's no. We don't want to. We don't want to beat the enthusiasm out of this woman too soon. Well, um, now anybody who is hired on here to NBC as a, a new employee, a first timer, uh, goes through an indoctrination period, and you get to see the NBC training film. Did you see the training film? Not yet. Haven't seen the training film. All right, tonight, Wendy, you are going to see the official NBC training film. Again, if we can roll that film. Uh, this is what you would see as a new employee to this fine television network. Welcome to the glamorous and exciting world of network television. As an NBC employee, you'll be working with skilled technicians and marvelous stars in one of the world's most modern broadcast facilities. But remember, the basic do's and don'ts of office etiquette apply here as anywhere. For instance, a well-rounded employee doesn't spend all his time on office matters, but takes time out to check on the world of sports. Mmm, chocolate. Not only delicious, but just the pick-me-up you need to stay alert and cheerful for the entire business. This day. An occasional yawn proves you've been putting in long hours and will score valuable points with your superiors. Hey, anyone for fun? Nothing perks up an office like a good practical joke. Hey, this place is haunted. <laughs> Looks like the joke's on me. Female employees, in particular, should work hard at maintaining a neat and attractive appearance. Hmm, very nice. <laughs> And if you would want to advance quickly up the NBC ladder, take an interest in the work of others. You know you shouldn't do that, Jimmy. Do what? <laughs> Don't worry, Jimmy. She won't be working here long because unlike you, she doesn't know the basic rules of office etiquette. That's the, uh, when you hear before we get carried away, I'd like you to have a late-night plastic collapsible drinking cup. I'm going to give you three of them there. And uh, also a couple of late-night with David Letterman sponges. Those would be nice. So you can use these uh, at the office and uh, also at work. You have any hey, Jimmy, Dave. Well, this is Hal Gurney, our director, Wendy. Yes, Hal. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to NBC. Hi. Yes, uh, Hal. Uh, Dave, uh, there's a phone call for you, please. Oh, excuse me, Wendy. There's a sure. phone call for you. Sure. <laughs> Hello. Good evening, David. This is Colonel Gordon Cooper. Oh, no. This is exciting. Wendy and ladies and gentlemen, it's former astronaut Gordon Cooper. Good, uh, good of you to call, sir. Oh, the pleasure is mine, David. Uh huh. I said I'd like to say a few words to Miss Moran. Sure thing, uh, Colonel. She's right here. There you go, Wendy. It's Colonel Cooper, former astronaut. Hello, Wendy. Hello. I'd just like to add my congratulations to you on your new job. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I never worked for NBC, but I did work for an outfit called NASA. Um, maybe you heard about us. We put a man on the moon. So I hope that your career goals work out as well. Thank you very much. Also, Wendy, congratulations on the fine coaching job you did last night for the Hoyas. <laughs> right, over Houston. 
you worked hard and your team worked hard. You really deserved it. And another thing, Wendy, good luck in the New York primary today in the Cup playoff. Good night now, Wendy, and congratulations again. Well, thank you very much. You too. <laughs> Yeah, that was very nice. Very exciting. Have you talked to an astronaut before? No, this is the first no, time. That was that was very very nice. Uh, your family is probably very proud of you with this job. Yes. Now, is everybody now watching NBC 24 hours a day? Yes. Oh, Thank that's you. good. Do you have anybody you'd like to say hello to before we uh, conclude? Yeah. Here? Uh, Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. Karen and Robert. Karen and Robert out in uh, Flushing watching now. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Maddie, Richard, Lou, and all my friends, former jobs, and my friends here, and especially to all the people in my new department. Big hello. <laughs> Okay, that's not a bad idea. Keep them happy. Uh, okay, uh, Wendy, uh, before we wrap this up, we do have somebody else we'd like you to meet uh, for a, another special presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, our own Larry Melman. Larry. Are you all right? Yeah, oh, I'm fine. Okay. Fine. Uh, Wendy, Wendy, this is uh, Larry uh, Melman, uh, Wendy Moran. Larry, take it away, if you will. Here are some number two pencils. May you always write the truth with them. Here is a ream of paper. May your reputation remain as unspotted as every sheet. Here is a blotter. You can put it on your desk. Oh, that's nice. And here's a print. You need a blotter? To oh, spruce good. up your new office. I get it up there, you'll see it. Oh, that's, okay. that's nice, Larry. You see what it says? Hang in there, baby. Friday's coming. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good idea. All right, now. I'll be following you back to the office. Now, Wendy. Uh, Larry, you have a you have a toast uh, for Wendy. Yes. All right, go right ahead. Here's the. Uh... But now with toast. Okay, some champagne. Okay. <laughs> employees may come, employees may go. Good luck with your job. I lost mine weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, no drinking during business hours. No drinking during business hours. Okay. <laughs> Well, you can. We'll see to it that you get the. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, by the way, are there any other openings over there? For men like you, always. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, there much. you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Wendy, it was a pleasure meeting you. Good luck on your job. Thank you for coming by. Our newest employee, ladies and gentlemen, Wendy Moran. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Welcome to the program. You came on a good night. Uh, I've got to be honest with you. We're just coming back from a, a brief vacation, and uh, I, I was out of New York, but some exciting things happened while I was gone. The Yankees finally opened at home uh, out at Yankee Stadium, and I guess it was very exciting. Uh, George Steinbrenner, of course, uh, threw out the first grenade, so it was kind of a <laughs> kind of an extra special day for uh, everybody who filed into the stadium there. And. Uh, What is, excuse me, just, what the hell, is that, uh, what is that? It's a monitor? Oh, yeah, is the, uh, the, the monitor go out up there? Okay, well, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll have it fixed before the end of the show. And uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm getting the hell out of here.
I'm, I'm so sorry you had to witness that unpleasantness. Uh, we have a, a fine program for you tonight. Anybody who's watched this program uh, from the beginning, way back in the late 50s, knows that from time to time, we have a lot of running jokes. Let me give you an example. We had a, the uh, car and truck rental song. We used that over and over and over again. Then there was a joke concerning stadium trash. We used that uh, way beyond uh, what was reasonable. Uh, of course, the giant doorknob was a long favorite running joke. Uh, and more recently, I guess, the conspiracy guy was a running joke. Well, tonight, uh, you've witnessed the beginning of another running joke, one that we call the panicky guy. And it, too, is played by the same man who was the conspiracy guy. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to a fine actor, Mr. Chris Elliott. Chris? How did you feel about it? Well, I was uh, a little nervous at first, but uh, obviously once you get out there with the audience and uh, the give and take yeah. kind of makes the whole thing work. Yeah, it's terrific. Now, uh, as I mentioned, you were, the, you were the conspiracy guy, That's correct. and you're now the panicky guy. Now, we have some videotape of the conspiracy guy, and then we'll look at the panicky guy. And when we're done looking, I wonder if you can just give us an idea what the, what the essential difference is between the two characters, okay? So first, uh, watch the monitors here. We'll see a little bit of the old conspiracy guy. Uh, what can we do for you, sir? Well, I'd like to know a little bit more about the conspiracy, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, yeah, I thought you'd about. say that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Schaefer and the shredded documents. I'm talking about Wendell and the laundered money. I'm talking about Connie Chung's secret committee of 12... Uh, I'm talking about Grant Tinker... Yeah, now those are, those are both uh, amazing portrayals, but what's, what's the difference between the two? Well, I guess the, uh, the major difference is wardrobe. Yeah. For, <laughs> for the panicky guy, I wear a turtleneck. Uh-huh. Oh, that's right, you're wearing a little turtleneck, but it's the same suit, isn't it? No, well, yes, actually it is one of the same suits. I have three. All right, now, um, w why don't you give us an idea what, what's next for the panicky guy, what we can look forward to. Okay, well, as you can see, we have this, this calendar that we've had made up that has four consecutive months on it, and we hope for a variety of different uh, panicky episodes during those months. Yeah, now this is a, an actual viewer aid. Is this available to the home viewers? Well, actually, uh, for the home viewer, they, they can write to their local affiliate to attain one of them. Uh -huh. um, but they should be aware that the, the uh, dates may vary. May be changing a little bit. All right, well, why don't you give, me, give us an idea? We started out here on the 16th, and uh, what can we look forward to now? Okay, well, let's see. On the, I'll just pick them at random. Uh, on the 26th, um, I, there's a large dog during Stupid Petricks, and uh -huh. I, I panic at that. And I, uh, I run out into the hallway, and I get run over by a floor waxer. Right, okay. Then just randomly over on the, the 22nd there, there's some sort of screw-up with the cue cards. Someone says the wrong line, and that, that makes me panic, and I run out in the hallway, and I get run over by a floor waxer. So uh, of the first three, we, there's a, a floor waxer involved in each of those. That's kind of the glue that kind of holds the whole thing into together. Oh, I see. That, so the, the premise is based on, on the floor on waxer. On the floor waxer. All right. Oh, now, this is interesting. Explain this for me. Down here in June, on the 6th and 7th, we see back-to-back -back appearances by the well, panicky guy. Well, <coughs> we're very excited about that. That's the two-part episode that we're planning. Two-parter. And it begins on the 6th with a surprise walk-on by Dom DeLuise, uh -huh. which makes me panic. Yeah. And I run out into the hallway. And out there, we freeze the frame, and it says, to be continued. Oh, a real cliffhanger. Yeah. And I don't, want to, I don't want to say what happens on uh, the 7th, but it involves a floor waxer. And again, a floor waxer. <laughs> okay. Um, now, 
the, the home version, do, will the, the kids at home get these magnetic uh, stick-ons? Well, they can send in for them, yes. Okay. You notice over on the 15th. Now, we there. don't tape on the Sunday. I was going to ask you about that. What happens? Well, that, the... that's the opening of the Westgate Mall in Baldwin, Long Island, and I'll be panicking out there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and actually, the, the first 100 shoppers at the mall will get the magnetic Oh, they likenesses. will be getting those lovely little uh, magnetic yeah, likenesses. And then we have balloons for the kids. And you have balloons for the kids. Sure. That's nice. Uh, now, I know you're going to run off to the big party to celebrate yeah. the... Uh... Can I interrupt just one second? I, I, sure, I'd not? like very much to introduce the gentleman who uh, portrayed the operator of the floor waxer, Mr. James Fields. Is he here? Oh, he hi, James. Nice job. job. Very nice. Yeah, he was... I've never, I've never worked with him before. No. And he was just marvelous to work with. He, he was damn good. He was damn good. There's a phone call for you. Oh, just a minute. Is, can you hang on? Sure. Oh, we have a phone call here. Uh, hello. Good evening, David. This is Sam Rose, Mrs. Baker. Oh. Hey, this is exciting. Hang on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's former astronaut Gordon Cooper. Good of you to call this evening, Gordon. Well, the pleasure is mine, David. I couldn't let the opportunity go by to add my congratulations to you and your support for you on the successful launch of a new running job. Well, th thank you very much, Colonel. If I could, David, I'd like to personally congratulate the young man who was struck by the waxing machine. Oh, yes. Uh, that's Chris Elliott. He's right here, Colonel. It's uh, Colonel Cooper. Yeah. You know, Chris, panic and hysteria had no place in the Mercury Space Program. But it certainly has a place in your fine new running gag. I hope you have a lot of good luck with it in the months and the years ahead. Well, thank you very much, sir. And by the way, a special congratulations to you on your 4,000th career hit against your old teammates, the Sellers. That was something. Good luck and keep swinging. Thank you, Colonel. Good night. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's Colonel Cooper. Boy, oh boy. Well. Let me just uh, once again add my congratulations. It looks like the panicky guy is really off to a, a quite a long run. Let's hope so anyway. We're hoping. Yes, nice job. Chris Elliott, ladies and gentlemen. The panicky guy. Yes, sir. We'll be back with Richard Lewis. You know, thinking up funny things to do on this program is never a problem, but uh, sometimes it is difficult to choose from our huge backlog of ideas. So to simplify matters, tonight we're bringing back a segment in which a spin of the wheel determines what you, the home viewer, see. Uh, yes, it's time once again for another installment of Dave's Grab Bag. Walk this way, won't you please? <laughs> Oh, boy. Yes, Dave's, Dave's grab bag. And as you can see, here we are by the giant wheel of fun. Let's take a look at the selections on the wheel of fun tonight. First, we have something called Paul's Choice. Now, if it lands on Paul's Choice, this is a chance for our own Paul Schaefer to request something he'd like to see. Uh, next we have, as you can see, a tribute to Bob Dylan. Well, that would be very nice since Mr. Dylan was on the show recently. Uh, here we have something called Fun with Grandma. And uh, Grandma, if, if it lands on that one, you, you're going to have to take your shoes off. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes, okay? Uh, the next one is Deep Freeze. Now, here, uh, we take a volunteer and suspend them, uh, place them in suspended animation in this ultra-cold cryogenic chamber to be thawed out at some time in the future. Our next selection, of course, is, oh, this one would be good also, Meet Gordon Cooper, a chance to visit in person with a former astronaut who has honored us many times with unexpected congratulatory phone calls. You know, thank you very much, Gordon. Perhaps we'll get a chance to talk with you later. Now, here's one you know the kids are all hoping for. It's called Liverville Theater. Yes, a play from the protein-rich liver puppets. Aren't, aren't they adorable? Okay. And another selection on the Wheel of Fun, Al Frisch's Breakfast Club. This features our own studio technician, Al Frisch. We'll tell you about that a little bit later. There's Al, okay. Uh, <laughs> here we have... 
finally, the suit of ferrets. Now, if it lands on a suit of ferrets, I... I slip into this Air Force jumpsuit, which has been tightly packed with vicious, foul-smelling rodents. So, there... <laughs> there you have it, the wheel of fun. It's getting warm here, isn't it, Grandma? Yes, it really is. All right, let's... Uh, it's time now for our first spin on the Wheel of Fun. Here we go. Spinning the Wheel of Fun. Dave's grab bag, where will it land? Actually, spun it a little too hard and falls first. Suit of ferrets. I'll be darned. Al Frisch's Breakfast Club. Well, uh, here's how this works. Our own Al Frisch will now tell us what he had for breakfast. Al, come on out here. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for this opportunity. This morning I had orange juice, coffee, and toasted bagel with cheese. Uh, I can't remember what kind of cheese. I think it was American, but sometimes I have cream cheese. Thank you. Well, thank you, Al. Nicely done. Al Frisch. Al's Breakfast Club. I think you'll agree with me that Dave's grab bag is really off to a flying start. Okay, let's spin it again. Boy, it's getting warm over here, isn't it? Okay, and it looks like it's going to be fun with... All right, it's, la it's, it's landed on deep freeze. May we have the volunteer, please? How do you do? Nice to see you. You just stand right over here. That's a very nice outfit. Thank you. Did we provide that for you? Yes, you did. Okay, here's how this works. This man will now be suspended in the sub-zero cryogenic chamber where liquid nitrogen and a freon oxygen bath will slow his metabolism to a standstill within seconds. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. All right, just go on in, get into the chamber, and I'll uh, adjust the dial here. Now getting into the chamber, we're putting him in suspended animation. Let me turn that down. Who knows what wonders await him when he emerges? Well, let's go back to the wheel and spin again, shall we? Okay. And it looks like it's... No. <laughs> Apparently the mechanism in the chamber has somehow crossed wires and screwed up the wheel, but it's... Landed on Paul's choice, our own Paul Schaefer. Paul, come on out here, sir. Uh, this is your moment. What would you like to see on Dave's grab bag, sir? Well, I'll tell you. All my life, I wanted to see a guy come out of suspended animation. Uh, tell you what. Tell you what. I would like to thaw this man out. Thaw what do you say? Out? Let's thaw him out. Let's bring him out of suspended animation. Well, what do you say? It's a, it's a little bit... Quite frankly, it's a little earlier than we anticipated, but all right, let me... I better adjust this very... <laughs> this is just how sensitive this thing is. You, you get near it and it... Let me, let me adjust this delicate dial here. There you go. Turn it off. All right, now let me... Let's open the uh, chamber door. Come on out here, sir. All right, there you go. So, uh, how you doing? Uh, what year is it? It's, uh, it's actually only a few minutes later than <laughs> when we put you in. Dave? Yeah, yeah. Dave? Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> Why don't you just go off stage there? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> oh, my God. Well... <laughs> See, he really wasn't, he wasn't gone that long, was he? No, not really. And, and yet he didn't seem to know what year it was. All right, now, is it time to spin the wheel again? I think it is. Let's go right to the wheel. Spinning once again. And uh, liver, meat. Yes, it looks like, no. Well. What a stroke of luck. We have landed once again on Al Frisch's Breakfast Club. Al, come on out here, won't you? Uh, Al, nice to see you again. You have, you have now another opportunity to tell us about another breakfast. Gee, Dave, this is kind of unexpected. I have only uh, this morning's mac breakfast memorized. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
you want to go in the chamber? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Maybe that'll help your memory yeah. out. Uh, uh, no, why don't you, uh, why don't you uh, tell us about yesterday's breakfast? Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, wait, I, uh, I do remember. Yesterday, I had orange juice, coffee, and a toasted bagel with cheese. I, I remember it was definitely American cheese. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Al. Nice talking with you. Good job. So for a second there, I thought we were going to be repeating ourselves. Okay, we have time for one more spin on Dave's uh, wheel of whatever we're calling this tonight. All right. And it looks like it's going to be the... S <laughs> and it's... Well, all right. It's come up uh, on a tribute to Bob Dylan, and we thought it only fitting that the spokesman of a generation should be honored by another important voice of the 1960s. I, of course, am talking about William Shatner. Tonight, we have selected a cut from William Shatner's album, The Transformed Man, and we're going to play for you his moving version of the legendary Bob Dylan song, Mr. Tambourine Man. Our salute to Bob Dylan. I'm not sleepy and there is no place I'm going to in the jingle, jangle morning. I'll come following you. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, this was just a test for possible overseas broadcast. This, uh, this won't be included in the real American version of the show, but uh, we have quite a program for you tonight. Aaron Gray will be here. Thank you very much, Grandma. You can go now. Very nice job. Thank you for being here. And uh, we also have the uh, Border Collies and a quiz on Campaign 84, and uh, uh, everybody in the audience gets an end table and I think a hassock, so we got plenty of fun. But... So, uh, anyway, Paul, now Sir. I have to ask you a question about the cable TV. Sir. I, I'm watching the other night, and a thing comes up saying that one of my many channels is malfunctioning. Yeah. And so I don't get it for the remainder of the day. Now, do, am I billed for that? Will I be billed for that anyway? I would say that uh, you would have to, uh, person would... The hell was that? Uh, it's a little, uh... A little bit of feedback, nothing, nothing to worry about or anything. Yeah, just, just sir, feedback? you know what that means? Faulty wiring. Oh, ooh, am I scared. I'm the panicky guy, remember me? Oh, boy, I want to live. I don't want to die. Let me out, let me out. Ooh, ooh. That, um... That, of course, was the panicky guy, a new running gag we introduced last week, played by our own uh, Chris Elliott. Uh, Paul, uh, did it seem to you like, I don't know, there was something not quite right about that performance? It, uh, I don't exactly know what's wrong. Uh, Dave, maybe you better go talk to him. He seemed a little lackluster, didn't he? I think you better have a, go speak to him, have a, have a All talk. All right, I'll go, I'll go talk to him, because yeah. normally it would have been just great. Let me, yeah. feel, excuse me for a second, I'll try and get to the bottom of this thing. How do you do? Are you new with the company? Not that long. Nice to see you. I've heard wonderful things about your work. Thank you. Let's see. Panicky guys. Oh, no. Oh, go away. Chris, it's Dave. Can I see you for just a second? Okay, come in. Chris, 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 Chris. Look, I... I don't want to bother you, but I get the feeling something's troubling you. Oh, no. Everything's just great. Here, take a look at the reviews. Running gag, stumbles, panicky guy, no panic. <laughs> Elliot, remarkably bad in panicky debut. Okay, you know, I'm not going to kid you. They're, they're a little rough, especially that one on the... 
front page of the New York Times, but, but I'm telling you, you can't, you can't let this sort of thing get you down. Let me tell you a little story. A long time ago, there was a play that opened on Broadway, and it got horrible reviews. Uh, one critic said the author ought to be shot, and people all over uh, the country were saying it won't last past opening night. Do you know what the name of that play was? Was it West Side Story? No, it was m Moose Murders, and it turned out they were right. But what I'm trying to impress upon you here, Chris, is don't worry about this stuff. Well, it's the Patty guy. Well, there you go. A little fan. Hi. Hey, oh. oh, no, now look, I hate to see you do that to yourself. That's not There's the answer. There's just no, so no. much one man can take. Telegram for the panicky guy. Send it away, it's just more hate mail. No, no, let oh, me, let me see it. Thank you very much, Why can't they just leave friends. me alone? Now look, this will be interesting. Let's read this. Oh, here you go. Dear Chris, I watched your new running gag last week and I know how you feel. In the early days of the space program, we also had to deal with di many disappointments, but we persevered. Good luck, Chris, and remember, the last four letters of American spell, I can. And it's signed, former astronaut Colonel Gordon Cooper. Wow. There you go, buddy. Great. You bet. Excuse me. Sure. Hello? Good evening, Chris. This is Colonel Gordon Cooper speaking. Well, hello, Colonel Cooper. <laughs> Just checking to make sure my telegram got there. Yes, it did. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I had a little trouble sending it, and I wasn't sure it would get there in time. I went down to where the old Western Union office used to be by the train station, but there was some kind of gourmet food shop there. The man at the newsstand next door told me they'd moved over five years ago, but he didn't know where. So I checked the phone book at the Italian restaurant across the street. It listed an office by the new co-op. So I drove over there, and by then, they couldn't guarantee that you'd receive it before tomorrow. Anyway, I'm sure happy that it did get there. Keep up the good work, and goodbye. Goodbye, Colonel Cooper. <laughs> well, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? It sure is. You feel better now, don't you? I certainly do. Let's give it another try. What do you say? Let's do it. Okay, come on, buddy. Okay, let's give it another try. So, Paul, now, am I going to have to pay for that? Am I going to be billed for that? Well, uh, normally, the uh, thing... W Ooh, what the hell was that? Don't worry. Just a little feedback, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? You know what that means? That means faulty wiring. I'm getting the hell out of here. I want to live. I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. <laughs> Paul Provenza, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. <laughs>All right, now coming up in the next half hour of this show, uh, man, we're very happy to have with us. George Carlin will be here, and uh, tomorrow, Buddy Hackett will be joining us, also musician Laurie Anderson, and Stupid Human Tricks. That will all... <laughs> the hell was that? What, uh, what's going on back there? Did you see anything, Paul? Hello. I don't know what that was. What was that? No. Gee, I don't... Oh, hi, hi Tommy. Tommy. That's the coffee pot acted up, but I got it all under control. The, the coffee pot coffee was pot acting up. Go, yeah. and you, but you took yeah. care of it. I took care of it. That old man's lying. That's just what they said in the towering inferno. I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to live. <laughs> uh, well, that was... Uh,
That was supposed to be one of our running jokes, the panicky guy, but uh, wasn't that supposed to be somebody else? Shouldn't that have been Chris uh, uh, Elliot? It did not look Paul? like the same panicky guy to me. No, it looked like a, a whole different panicky guy. Um, maybe I better go see what the deal was. I think you... Thanks, Tommy. Better find I, out. I'm sorry about it. It would have been, uh, not that it wasn't great the way it was, but I think we all were looking for something a, a little different. Well, I'll be right back. Hi, nice to see you. Get that press, will you? You look beat. Why don't you towel off and get out? I'm sorry, do you have an appointment with Mr. Uh, no, I don't. It's just hey, take a second you can't here. go in there. Just a little more. Chris! Yeah. Dave! Hi, how you Dave. doing, buddy? Uh, fine, how are you? Good, nice to see you. Listen, I'll, uh, I'll be right with you, okay? O'Brien, you've got Regis Philbin in 20 minutes. Flaherty, you're at the Westgate Mall, you're already late. Danny, you've got little Lucy Shaw's birthday party up on 86 and 3rd. Now, gentlemen, let's remember, we're panicky guys, okay? So let's see some real panic out there today, okay? Let's go. Get them. Bye-bye, guys. Oh, boy, what a day. Dave, sit down. How about a drink? Uh, oh. no, I can't. We're, oh. we're right, right in the middle of the show. Chris, what's going on? Now, we all thought you'd be out there in the audience tonight doing the panicky guy for us. Well, didn't Wickline show up? Well, and yeah, he, he showed up, but it just, it just wasn't the same. I mean, we, we wanted you to be out there. I mean, you were supposed to be out there. <laughs> well, Dave, I, I don't have time to do that sort of stuff anymore. You don't? Why, certainly not. I have a business to run here, Panicky Enterprises. Business is really picking up, too. Oh. Let me show you some things. Right here, this is the Panicky Ashtray. Yeah. And right over here is the Panicky Beach Towel. That's nice. And this is the Panicky Dicky. And here's something we're really proud of. It's a proposal for a new running gag, the Panicky Gal. Panicky Gal. That's going to be great. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, that's wonderful, Chris. Uh, and I'm very happy that things are going so well for you. But, you know, I remember a panicky guy who wasn't so sure of himself. A panicky guy who needed the faith and encouragement of his friends to pull him through some rough beginnings. And uh, anyway, I just thought maybe you'd reconsider and do the panicky guy for us yourself. We, we really need you, Chris. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening, Dave. What? Uh, I was just saying that it would really be nice Dave, if you could... Dave, I, uh, I just thought of something, and I, I want to write it down before I forget it. Would you mind, um... Oh, sure, I, I get the picture. Great. Fine. Uh... Well, good luck with the business. Well, thank you. Panic. Panicky Enterprises. Is this Chris? Colonel Cooper. Damn right, boy. My first question is this. Who died and made you king? I'm watching you at home getting sick to my stomach. Why, if someone in the space program had tried to get away with this crap you're pulling, they would have been permanently grounded. Heck, boy, I must admit I'm having just a little trouble controlling my language. My suggestion to you, Chris, is to get your sorry behind back in that studio just as fast as you can before I forget that I'm a gentleman. You're absolutely right, Colonel. I'll do it. You're wasting time, boy. He is right. He is right. Dave! Dave! Apparently he's decided that he doesn't want to uh, be the panicky guy for us anymore. And we'll, I don't know. I'm uh, just sick about Dave? it. So, Dave? Yes, sir. Dave? I was just wondering with your permission, if it would be all right if I did the panicky guy for you and for everyone else in the audience. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure, it's all right. Of course it's all right. Welcome back. All right. Okay. So, now... What the hell was that? What, what's going on here, anyway? No, what, what the what, hell no, was no. that? Oh, no, I'm getting the hell out of here. I want to live. I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. Get out of my way. I'm getting <laughs> the hell out of here. back with George Carlin.
Okay, um, uh, it's time to wrap another one up. Jerry, just terrific. Thanks, really nice David. job. And please come back and we'll spend some more time Thank talking. You. We're running late tonight. Anyway, a another great job. Jerry Seinfeld. Also, my thanks to uh, Leon Russell and Howard Stern. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the important thing to remember about the show tonight, there were no arrests and no one got hurt. And I what? think that's... Someone's going to get hurt? No. <laughs> Excuse me. I got to get the hell out of here. Oh. I'm too young to die. Get the hell out of my way. Of course, that's uh, Chris Elliott, our, our panicky guy. Paul, did it strike you that there was something wrong with Chris tonight? Very wrong. He looks, he looks yeah. It didn't seem quite like the old panicky guy. No. No. Well, maybe I should go check into this. All right. Excuse me, Jerry. I'll, check. I'll, I'll go. Usually he's, uh, he's a lot more lively than that. I'll, let me just go see what we can do. Come in. Letterman? Yes, I'm Letterman. Please don't stay too long. He doesn't have a lot of time. I, I don't understand. doesn't have a lot of time Mr. for what? Mr. Letterman, your panicky guy happens to be an awfully sick man. You shouldn't have done the show tonight, and you could go at any moment. I'll be outside, lady, in case anything happens. Chris. Chris, I had no idea you were really this sick. What do you have? It's a rare disease. It's called Meyerson syndrome. Meyerson syndrome? Doesn't that usually strike teenage girls? <laughs> yes, it's so unfair. Dave. Uh, yeah, I'm right Dave. here. I'm right here. I'm right here. We had some good times, didn't we? <laughs> Yeah, we really did. You know, they're planning on making a made-for-TV movie about my life. A made-for-TV movie? That's terrific. That's great. Yeah, Mark Hamill's going to play me. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know who's going to play me? I think George Takai. I don't know who that is. He played Sulu on Star Trek. Uh, yeah. Dave! Dave! Yeah. I'm right here. I'm right here. Don't leave me. No. It's getting dark. I'm here. Are you there? I'm right here. Don't leave me, please. <laughs> Listen, uh, Colonel, uh, uh, Chris can't come to the phone right now, but I tell you what, if, if you can call back after the, uh, after the show, I, I'll uh, be able to explain uh, things a little bit better <laughs> if you call later. Okay, Dave. Yeah. By the way, I saw that V, the final battle show a while back, and I thought it was pretty good. Congratulations. Yeah, well, uh, uh, thanks, Colonel, but you know, it we... It makes me proud, the work you're all doing there at NBC. Yeah. Good luck, and just tell Chris I called. Yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tell him you called, all right, Colonel. <clears throat> well, uh, tomorrow night on the show, we'll have color expert Leah Eisman, 
model uh, Paulina Poritzkova, uh, video games and uh, new gift items. Good night. Also uh, tomorrow, oh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger from the new movie Con Conan the Shop Teacher. That'll be tomorrow, uh, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you know, it's interesting, Paul, just exactly about where you're standing in rehearsal before you were here, one of those lights fell. It came very close. Really? Very close. It must have missed your uh, piano area by, by a few inches. So if I was here, if I had been standing here, yeah. it would have been like would all have been over trouble. for me? Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Wow. Very lucky. About let me that. let me explain what's happening here. You see the uh, the shot of the empty seat up there. There it is again. Uh, normally at this time that would have been the cue for our panicky guy to jump up and and run out of the studio. And for those of you who not seen the show too often, he was a nice man, but often frightened by things just like that, and he would have run out of the studio and been quite upset. Well, <clears throat> last week sometime he uh, suddenly passed away. <laughs> And uh, so that's, that's the uh, kind of the mix up there. But, you know, believe me, if he were still with us, that light falling really would have scared him silly. He would have been unbelievably Probably frightened panicked, by that. Uh, yeah, the panicky guy. What was that? That doesn't sound too safe. I'm getting out of here. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. I must get where it's safe. <laughs> You know, I think we're going to be nominated for a Peabody Award. I just... Yes, Hal, you had something for us? Yeah, Dave, uh, there's a phone call for you. Oh, a phone call. Oh, good. Let's extend this a little longer. <laughs> hello? Hey, this is Colonel Cooper. Well, hello, uh, Colonel Cooper. It's Colonel Gordon Cooper, ladies and gentlemen, former astronaut. Dave, did I just say what I think I just saw? Uh, Yes, you did, Colonel. We we all saw it. Okay. Ah! Colonel, my goodness. Well, the Colonel has uh, gone yeah. nuts. The I'm Colonel's gone crazy. Peabody Award. Well, look at you. Yes. There's some kind of a cat hair on my desk or something. I'll be darned. Somebody have a cat in the building? Look at that. Do you have uh, never seen such a thing? <laughs> oh well. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> Do we, do we have we have more show, don't we? I, I certainly hope so. Yeah, we do. We have uh, lots of show coming up for you. And mm. I'll tell you what we're going to do now. I don't think we've had one so far tonight. We're going to do a commercial. <laughs> so we're going to pause for a commercial now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dave, this letter by no means is meant to upset you, but my mom and I are, are sick and tired of looking at those repetitious suit coats and those same old beige pants. Why don't you try dressing chic? Why can't you be a little more like Julio Iglesias? 
And it's signed, Love Ya, Donna, and Mom. Wow, they give it to me kind of hard. I guess I do dress sort of bland and, uh... Oh, gee, sometimes I wish I'd never been born. <laughs> Dave, 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 yes, Dave, Hal? A phone call for you. Phone call? Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello? Good evening, David. This is Julio Iglesias speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, it's international singing star Julio Iglesias. An honor to hear from you, sir. Oh, the pleasure's mine, David. I just wanted to compliment you on your fine taste in clothing. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. In the early days of the space program, they had wardrobe problems also. But they went on to make over a dozen manned space flights. That's more than Elvis or the Beatles. Uh -huh. Well, thank you very much for the encouraging words, Julio. Goodbye, David. And good luck. Okay, uh, we are gracious, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's it uh, for viewer mail uh, this week, ladies and gentlemen. I guess uh, next week we'll be answering a whole another batch of uh, viewer mail. And oh, I see we have one more here. <laughs>
to tell you the truth, Dave, there wasn't much to congratulate. You seem to be pretty much of a jerk, and I thought your show was made by and for complete idiots. Uh -huh. Now I see that it isn't so. Uh -huh. For that, I salute you. Well, well thank you very much, uh, Colonel, for those kind words. Thanks again. Good luck, David, and goodbye. Thank you very much. Gordon Cooper. Ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Cooper. former astronaut called me a jerk, Paul. <laughs> How do you think my mom feels? I'm embarrassed. Now, not that there's a chance in hell that she's up watching, but how do you think she would feel if she heard a terrible. former astronaut call me a jerk? I feel terrible about it. Uh, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back here with uh, Billy Bragg. <laughs>